knows how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I am not an African American. You're Oreo cookie, white right in the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I will slap you. Go ahead, you make my day. Black as the ace of spades, but 100, 100 percent American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Move it right along. I have with me uh, Joel Anderson, Joel Anderson, award-winning reporter at the Tampa Bay Times and a regular contributor to the Post Bougie, a blog that deals with deals primarily with issues of class, race, gender, gender, culture, and media. But I wanted to talk to Joel about an article that he wrote um, about his father as a person, a husband, and a father to him. Joel, good morning, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I just say thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I totally appreciate you being here. Very, very interesting article. So what I want to do is deal with paragraph by paragraph by paragraph, and okay. then I want to talk about how you were able to overcome your situation with your father. Uh, you wrote this article, and, and, and the first paragraph that I have here says, it took me a long time to realize that my father wasn't a bad man, just a bad husband for my mother. That That's what happens when you're a mama's boy and your mother not so subtly drills that into your impressionable mind. Explain that to us. Well, um, you know, for the, my parents were, uh, had a, a very difficult, uh, marriage and relationship for a long time. And, uh, as a, as a little boy, um, you know, I, I can recall, you know, a number of, you know, really ugly arguments. I mean, nothing. I mean, and I should I should make this clear. Nothing physical, um, but just very loud, yeah. ugly arguments. And you know, when your mother gets hurt, um, you know, I took that very personally. Um, you know, it, 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 from a very young age, I was probably closer to my mother, and I knew that it was my father that was hurting my mother. Um, so you can and, identify with your mother, but not necessarily with your father. Right. And well, I could. I, in terms of who was causing the most havoc in the house, yeah, I could relate to my mother more because she was there more. Um, she was, you know, the primary, uh, you know, child uh, child ch- uh, caregiver. caregiver in the house, uh-huh. right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I, I definitely related to her more, and I, I, I felt her pain much more than I felt my father's. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, how did your father feel about you being so close to your mother and not to him? Um, well, I mean, it's something that had come up over the years, right? Like he would say, well, I know you're not going to tell me you're, you know, you're going to tell your mother. And, um, you know, to, to that point though, he was very resilient. Like he, he always worked at trying to, you know, build bonds with me. Now, you know, sometimes, you know, some efforts were better than others. Um, and, you know, he was sort of limited by, you know, um, you know, whatever personality, issues and whatever personality conflicts that we may have had, but he was resilient. Um, He kept trying to build bonds with me throughout the years. He never gave up that uh, we would have a a, a close relationship. Were you an only child? Are you an only child? I was raised as an only child, yes. I have uh, two half-sisters. You said that your mother subtly drilled that into your impressionable mind about your father. How did she do that? What do you mean by that? Well... And, uh, you know, I actually spoke about this uh, with my mother uh, this week. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I want to be fair to her. Um, it's not that she ever told me that my father was a bad man. She always encouraged uh, a close relationship between me and my father. But she would say, well, your dad is out there doing bad things. And, yeah. 
um, you know, you know, you don't, you know, your father, he doesn't have the right to tell you that because he's not doing the right thing. And, you know, you, after a while, you sort of say, well, man, why am I, li- why would I listen to this guy? And my mother is sort of undermining his authority, uh, with me, with me. Um, uh, so I, I just, you know, after a while, I just said, well, you know, I, what, what right does my dad have to tell me, uh, about how to do, do right to do the upstanding thing or do the moral thing, um, when, you know, he was having his own failings in that regard. It's interesting in that she didn't have to tell you to hate your father. Don't you know? On one hand, she acted as though she wanted you to be with him, but mm-hmm. these negative things that she was telling you about him, it was turning you away from him. Right, right. Um, you, you know, it, and I'm, I'm I'm guessing it probably was very difficult for her to sort of uh, separate the two. That you know, that she's she's looking at him as you know as a whole person and not really separating out the fact that he was a good father. But um, yeah, that you know, she just very rarely would she ever compliment him. I, and I, I I'm trying to think as a child, like you know, if she ever said anything that was particularly kind or you know you, well your father is a good man and i don't remember her saying that now she never yeah. said that he was a bad man but she didn't say that he was a good man either i um for the last 23 years i have to honestly tell you that i've done and i still do uh individual and family counseling and most of the time i when it's a couple whether they're married or getting married or already married i make sure both of them are there and I've often heard the men speak highly of their wives in these counseling sessions. But I can name, out of 20, 23 years, I can probably name you two times when I've heard the wife speak highly of her husband. Right. It's just something in, and he's like, most of the time the men are shocked. Mm-hmm. It's just something within them that will not allow them to speak highly of their husband. What do you think that is? Well, I mean, I, it's really difficult for me to, to speak, you know, more broadly. But what I would say in this instance is that, you know, uh, if, it, it, say, my, my parents had gone to counseling, uh, and if they did, I, I didn't know anything about it. Um, you know, the reason they were there was because of my, fa- you know, the, the 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 father in this instance. And so, you know, if you're you're hurt, and you know, my mother, um, you know, she was married once. She was married to my father. Um, you know, this yeah, my father was the love of her life, and uh, you know, he caused her a lot of grief. And I'm assuming that it was very difficult for her to see past that pain. You know, um, and and sort of look at him as a you know, as a full person, you know what I mean? So yeah. let um, me take a quick break. 888-775-3773. 888-77-J-E-S-S-E. Back in a moment. I'm coming home now right away I'm coming home baby now I'm sorry now I ever went away. Joel Anderson is with me uh, an award winning reporter at the Tampa Bay Times and uh, we're going to give out his uh, blog here in a minute wrote a very interesting article about uh, his father uh, f- his father as a person a husband and a father to him and how he came to really overcome and love his dad. Do you say, you call yourself a uh in the article a mama's boy at one time. What is a mama's boy? Um well, you know, I I really closely identify with my mother. I mean, I mean for I would probably say uh for the majority of my life that my mother has been my best friend. Um you know, I I we don't have very many secrets between the two of us. Um, you know, if anything went wrong in my life, she was the first person I called and, and vice versa. Um, we just had a really, really close connection. And uh, it's, you know, it, it you know, it's, it's something that, uh, that, you know, that whether my own personal relationships with other women or whatever, it's just something that, like, you know, people... Uh, just sort of had to come to terms with. Now, you know, that it, for the most part, it's been it's been a healthy relationship. Um, I mean, you know, I you like being that close to your mama. Yeah, I you, mean, you know, I, I, as you get older, you learn to manage it, right? Um, you know, about, the, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, well, mom, I'm not going to talk about that with you, or this is not your business. This is my business, right? Or, you know, whatever. So, so it's, because it sounds like um, a female relationship, you know, like 
girl mm-hmm. talk, you know, two women together. Uh, so a mama's boy is one, uh, one that who is uh, close to his mother in that manner? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I, yeah, I don't know that um, you know that I would I would uh, characterize it as like you know a female relationship, but I, you know I think that you know you, you, when you have somebody that uh, you know I, I owe my mother everything. You know she she was the probably said the primary uh, child uh, person that took care of me. Um, you know she's always been there by my side. Um, did you I, want to be that close to her, or did it happen on its own without you being aware that you were becoming that close it, to your mother? It, it happened on its own. Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, you know, there there was, you know, I, I very rarely uh, was, was away from the home. I, mean, I lived in the same house for 18 years until I went off to college. And, wow. you know, I, I, you know, and so I was always, you know, um, with my mother. Now, I mean, I still had a lot of other friends, you know, me and my dad, you know, my, me and my, my I played college football and my dad, you know, he taught me football, and so I did all the 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 typical, you know, male things. I guess is what you would say. But yeah. um, are you married? Yes, I am. And is your wife like your mother? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> she's to- is she totally opposite of your mother? Oh, that's tough. Uh, they share some important characteristics that uh, that you know that made me love my wife. But um, they're, give me, they're give me an similar. example. Give me an example. Um, they're both very smart, very opinionated. Uh, those are things that I like. I like people to be honest with me. Um, they're very perceptive. Um, and they're really engaged, uh, when they talk to you. Um, can she accept you being very honest with her and about her? Uh, my wife? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, that's, you know, I mean, yeah, we wouldn't, you know, it would be very difficult. Yes on that. Well, it would be very difficult to be in a relationship where, like, you, you know, every single thought that went through your mind that you shared it. But, I mean, for everything that's important uh, in a relationship, whether it's like this is my needs, are my needs getting met? Are your needs getting met? Um, you know, are we headed down the same path? Um, all of those sorts of things we're, we're, we're honest about. Um, you write that, yes, referring to your father, he was deceitful. Yes, he was hypercritical. Yep. Yes, he was extremely moody. Yes, mm-hmm. he could be distant, not often to me, but to my mother. I internalized her pain and grief over their troubled, troubled marriage and made them my own. Why did you do that? Um, well, you know, my, I, I come from a family, and I, I told this to, some, to somebody the other day, that um, I wasn't used to seeing people cry a lot, right? Like, I'm not really equipped <laughs> to deal with people that cry a lot. Yeah. Um, but, but when I saw my mother cry, um, it really it really would shake me. I was like, oh, my God, something is wrong here. And, you know, so when I would see, you know, whether my father had done something that would really hurt my mother, um, who I, you know, I think is just one of the toughest people I know, uh, it really, it really would unsettle me, and it would really bother me. And I'd be like, "Well, why are you doing that? Like, why are you doing these things to hurt my mother? Why are you doing these things to make th- this house a chaotic place?" You would say this to your father? I uh, no, I'm saying this in my mind. I was, oh. a little, <laughs> I, was a little, I was a little boy, uh, okay. but but I mean, it's the sort of things that you know, like you over the years, you're like, "Why is Dad doing this to Mom? Why, you know, why is he not staying with us tonight? Uh, you know, why is you know." You know, why is yeah. mom locked herself in the bathroom and is crying? You know, that sort of thing. Why do? You, why is it that you never asked your father? Growing up, you didn't ask your father about these things? I didn't feel like it was my place. Yeah, I understand. Uh, even then, you know, I was like, well, you know, I, I mean, because even then I'm like, well, that's their thing. Um, but I so, you know, I, I wanted to be respectful of my father, you know, and I was like, well, I don't really have the right to tell him what to do. Um, but, like, I can withhold uh, affection from him. I can withhold, you know, I can, you know, I can subtly undermine his authority without, you know, being outright disrespectful to him. So you have become just like your mother. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that. But what I would say because is that's that, what she was doing and you, and you were so close to her. So your identity became hers because you identified with her so much. Well, you know, my mother had, had the right i felt like for me i i I wasn't i was i I still you know would go with my dad i mean if my dad when my dad would come home even at a very young age like i would run to the door to meet him like i understand yeah you knew how to undermine and play that little game with him 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I was mad at him too. Right. You know, I was like, "Dad, you need to you need to be here. You should be here with us." But you didn't say it to him, though. You know, I was not. You know, I was a little boy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I don't even know that I could have articulated it in such a way that it would have. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe I could have, but I mean, I'm looking at that. You know, with the benefit of uh, 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. Would you say those things to your mother about your father? No, but- I didn't. Just, I, I did not. I did. I, you know. I, I and that's that's one thing about it, though. I never. I tried not to be critical of my father in front of my mother. Oh, good. Um, I didn't. I didn't want to do that. I mean, I, I heard enough criticism of my dad, um, and so I, you know, I, I felt like, um, you know, maybe he, I, you know, you know, as a part of you, even if things are bad, you're like, well, maybe dad will come back. Um, maybe yeah. dad will be able to come back home. So I was like, well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna help. You know, um, did you ever say to your mother, that. did you ever say to your mother, I don't want you telling me, uh, don't tell me your troubles with my father. Don't talk to me about it. Um, I, I, I'm, I know that that conversation was had probably when I was like in high school, maybe college. Right. Um, but I didn't say it as a kid because, you know, I, 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 yeah, I felt like it was my job to be there. Um. You, my mom, you so. say as a result, my father and I spent a good many years alternating between uneasy peace and power struggle. Mm-hmm. I would begrudgingly, begrudgingly obey his orders. Mm-hmm. I was openly contemptuous when he tried to impact. I mean, I'm sorry, impart lessons about my about morality and righteousness. I rarely, if ever, confided in him. Or trusted his judgment. I was, I was an ungrateful a hole. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> that, was, that was me. <laughs> That's amazing. Um. Yeah. Uh. You know. But you know. You as you get older, you're like, why was I? You know, why was I doing that? Like. You know, my father was opening him. You know, I, I have a lot of friends, um, some that had fathers in the home, some that some that didn't. And I can say that, uh, you know, with my one of the, one of the few father son relationships where we say I love you to each other regularly, um, where we hug each other, um, you know, we tell each other we're proud of each other. Um, and I mean that, that some of that obviously that had to grow, but I mean even from a young age we would say I love you. I was never embarrassed to tell my father right, I loved him, right? Or whatever. But not you loved him, but not loved him in the right way because you couldn't be honest with him as to what was going on within yourself about him. You know the stuff that was being passed on to you. Yeah. Well, again, like I, I felt like as a child, it's sort of really hard to articulate that. Um, and I, I, I I've Plus, only gotten. Yeah, you're right in that. You know, when we were children, especially in the black family, most of the time they they don't allow you to speak up honestly like that. It may they make you feel that you're being disrespectful. Yeah, uh, yeah, and well, you know, in, in, in my fa- in my family, um, I will say that I had a little bit more rope than a lot of others. That my parents were really, uh, really, really sort of drilled into me, like you know, standing up for yourself. Um, you know, saying feel, if if you feel aggrieved. Uh, if you don't feel like you can say it, tell us and we'll say it for you, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, but in the home, I mean, you know, there's just a lot of things that can sometimes go unsaid. And I just want it to be, you know, my version of respectful, which is, you know, okay, I'll do what you say, but, you know, you don't really, you know, all right, Dad, you know, but, you know, you sort of, uh, you can be a little bit, um, you know, uh, a little bit contemptuous uh, of things. And, you know, you, there's ways that kids can, yeah. can do that. Uh, <laughs> you say, in my rush to defend my mother, I never considered his sacrifices or grief or even his in- insufficiency for the nuclear family lifestyle. As he often told me, he grew up without a father. As one of eight children in Hot Spring, Arkansas, his mother, my grandmother, died of a stroke. When he was 17, he got married to a girl, not my mother, that he is he had gotten pregnant the next year, and then he was soon off to Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, my father and I always talk about this uh, with people that you know. I'm a writer now. Yes, and I feel like um, my father in another world would have been a writer or, or something where he would have. Uh, used his mind more than his hands. Now, my father did eventually go to college and get a degree, um, but he never really used it, right? Right. Um, 
And so, you know, I've always thought that, you know, because of sort of my dad's upbringing, that he missed out on a lot of things, like a lot of the things that I was blessed to have, um, a lot of the privileges and, you know, the schools I went to and the support I had. He really never had that. Right. And he had to grow up really, really fast. And, Did it uh, impact you when he told you uh, that he never had a father? He got married at 17 because he had impregnated his woman. And did that impact you in any kind of way? It it it, it, it sometimes made me feel sad for my dad, but yeah. it also I was like, well, stop using that. I, you know what I, I I'd say to myself? I'd say stop using that as an excuse. Um, <laughs> I would say that that's not that's not an excuse for what you're doing here. Um, but I mean, you know, I, as you get older, you're like, well, man, you know. <laughs> My dad really just didn't have an example um, and yeah. really never grew up in a house where he would have, you know, anything different would have been expected of him, you know. And the final paragraph before the change came, you write that by the time I had moved on to college, I fooled myself into believing I didn't really need a father figure anymore. I was tired of hearing his increscent mm -hmm. reminder of to check the car tires Oh, to check the car tire pressure, schedule dentist appointments, and try whatever vitamins that he was taking himself. I thought I needed him to transition into more of a friend than a father. Right. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'd fooled myself when I was 18 that I was a man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That I, that I was self-sufficient, that I could take care of myself, and that, you know, hey, you know, Dad— you know, and our, our phone conversations in those days might last five minutes because he say, well, have you done this? Have you done that? And I'd be like, all right, Dad, enough of that. Uh, I've got to go. You know, I just didn't yeah. want to hear it. Wow. And so I was like, okay, I'm a man. I was like, I'm a man now. Like, you weren't there. You weren't. You didn't live in the house for the last, uh, you know, six, seven years. You know, I learned to do some things on my own. I, I was mowing the yard on Saturdays. So, you know, yeah. uh, let's. I need you to be my homeboy now rather than my dad. <laughs> and then the change came. You write that this all changed for you when you left your first, when you lost your first job. And your father was there for you as he left, as you left the building. You lost your first job. Your father was there as you were leaving the building of this job, right? Yes, he tell was. Us, tell us about that. Okay, so uh, I, I, you know, it, it was becoming apparent that I was not going to have that job anymore. It was and a great job, right? Oh, it was a great job. And in fact, I lived at home. I, I'd, I'd found a job. I'd, I'd lived away for a few years and then I got a job. It was one of my dream jobs, actually. Uh, and I'd, I'd got a job back home and I was just living the high life. I was doing everything I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, without going into too much detail, uh, it became apparent that I was not going to be able to have that job uh, anymore. And so, you know, as, as I'm getting, as I'm preparing for this final meeting, uh, my father and my mother actually drove me over to that building because they were worried about me. You know, I was right. like, I was, I was not in a good place. And they just said, you know, we prayed and, you know, they brought me over there and they said, it's going to be okay. And, and you were really taking this hard, losing this job. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. I, I remember thinking in my car one day, I was like, man, how could I just drive and disappear? Like, where could, where could, <laughs> could is there some place I could disappear off to? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so they're driving me over to work. And, um, you know, I, I, you know I, get, I get into the building, and I'm thinking, I'm still convinced myself, maybe this is going to work out. Maybe this is just a warning, whatever. I was, I'm going to be suspended, but, I'll, you know, I'll be okay. And that didn't happen. I lost my job, and I, I held it together, I, or I tried anyway. I just, you know, yeah. I set my jaw, I got real stoic, shook hands, walked out, out of the building, and then uh, I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to head back to the car. And my dad, I guess he had seen me maybe walk out, and he said he's waiting for me at the bottom of the stairs at the building as I get there. Right. And he held open his arms, and I, I you know, I, I, it's if I've ever cried harder in my life, uh, I, don't, I don't know what it would have been, but um, he was right there. He, he brought me in and held me and I just I didn't care I didn't care that anybody was around yeah. I just cried and we held each other and uh it was I mean it's one of the moments of my life that I'll never forget man that's that's uh emotional now yeah yeah it it it, it hurts me uh well, it I mean it, it hurts me but it also heartened me um because I mean there's just not a lot I mean you know I, I think about 
you know, all the things, all the ways that I've slighted my dad over the years and, um, you know, that he he just was a resilient father. He didn't give up. He never gave up on me. He never gave up on our relationship. And I had never given him the sort of emotional support that, uh, it, you know, that he'd given me uh, throughout the course of my life, but certainly in that moment. And it really hit home to me. Um, and you know, it, I, it just changed your heart toward him. It, it really did. It really did. Um, things got much better. Um, I was just like, you know, why... Why am I doing? I was like, Why am I doing this? Yeah. I was like, Why can't? And then you, you know, as you get older, you become aware of the fact that, um, you know, we only have so much time, right? Yeah. Like, I, I didn't, I didn't want to look. Back. I, I told myself, I, like, I don't want to look back and say that I wasted time. Um, you say that he had all. You realize from that moment he had always been there for me, even as he wasn't there very much at all for my mother. He might not have been the best husband, but he was the best father. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really believe, I mean, he was, you know, I'm not, I, I, you know, I don't know who everybody else's father is. I'm sure everybody else has great dads. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade him for the world. And I mean, you know, every day, you know, I, I, I tell people, my father learned how to send text messages on the phone just so he could talk to me. Cause he, wow. <laughs> he, uh, he, he, you know, he, he'd see me at home on the phone and, uh, you know, and ignoring phone calls, but responding to text. And so he learned, how to text just so he could get up with me. And so every day he sends me a note, Hey son, I love you. Uh, you you know, you're the, you're the, you're the pride of my life. Um, so how do you personally feel within yourself now that you're forgiving your father? I mean, I feel hardened. Um, I, 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 I feel like we, I, I got it right in time. Yeah, um, yeah. that, you know, that I didn't, you know, I know some people, um, unfortunately, I have some friends that lost their fathers at an early age, and they were in a, they were not in a good place. Um, and I never wanted. I, I I know that I won't have that sort of regret on my heart. And even still, even as I know that like there was time that was lost, but mm-hmm. like I feel like I can make that up now. Um, and that you know, me and my father, we've gotten much closer. Uh, certainly since I've been married, um, you know, there's you know, I, I I talk to him, I go to him with things now, whereas he used to always have to come to me and tell me to do things. I'm, you know, I say, well, my dad might know how to handle this. Wow. Mm-hmm. You're blessed, man. Yeah, I really am. I really am. <laughs> wow. An amazing story. What's your uh, blog address or email address? Or, I'm sorry, not email, but website. Yeah, okay. So uh, I blog for Post Bougie. It's just www.com. P-O-S-T-B-O-U-R-G-I-E dot com, postbougie dot com. Uh, I also write at the Tampa Bay Times newspaper down here in Tampa, Florida. And I'm also on Twitter at Black Inc. 12. So it's B-L-A-C-K-I-N-K 12. Okay, folks, welcome back. The more to the story of Anderson, Joe Anderson, is if you want peace, if you want to be free, you got to forgive your father. Uh, you got to look at that relationship with your mother and your father. And you got to see how you've been set up unknowingly by your mother to resent your father. And even when she's pretending that, and not all mothers are like this, but even when she's pretending that she is teaching, she's not saying anything negative about him, her actions, her emotions, if you're really close to her, you're going to identify with them, and you will turn against your father even if you don't want to. And it's going to uh, screw up your life, for the lack of better words. You never, ever, 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 but never, 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 ever, 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 never. It doesn't matter how much you go to church, read the scriptures, lift up holy hands, give tithe uh, tithe and offering to your church or donate to other people. If you don't forgive your fathers, love them with all your heart, soul, and might, you're never going to know God. You would never you would never enter into the kingdom of heaven within while you're living and above when you die because the father represent Christ on earth. And when you hate your father, you hate God. I, um, and to the mothers who have done this to your children and are doing it, I would urge you to 
apologize right away. Be honest. Son, daughter, I'm sorry, but I resented your father because my life was screwed up and I turned you away from him and you're suffering because of it and you become like me because I forced you without you understanding what was happening to resent your father and made you identify with me and I'm wrong. And it can help free your kids up and yourself, whether they're little kids or adults now. If you can apologize, mothers and grandmothers, for doing these things, you too can be free. But to those who mothers or grandmothers will not apologize, you forgive them. Yes, it was wrong, but you become like what you hate. So you forgive them, and God will forgive you. They don't have to admit that they were wrong, but God will make you free. Excellent testimony from Joel Anderson. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and calling in. Tomorrow is Open Line Friday. Get it off your chest today. Have a good day and watch your backs and be safe. This has been the Jesse Lee Peterson Show, produced by Bond, Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. Views expressed by guests and callers on today's program may not necessarily represent the views of the station. For more information, call 1-800-411-BOND. That's 1-800-411-BOND. Or visit our website at bondinfo.org.